Oh, you need a screen. The intro. Aloha, e nā hoa makamaka o kō Hawaii pai aina. Aloha e Hawaii nui o ke awe. Aloha e Maui nui a kama. Aloha e Moloka nui a hina. Aloha e o ahu a lua no kaku ki hewa. Aloha e kawaii o mano kalanipo. Welcome to Hawaiian Kingdom News Live. Seven days of headline news in 60 minutes. We got a hot show for you today with some emergency proclamations because we're bringing to you live news of genocide 127 years in the Hawaiian Kingdom and to the weather with the national crisis. Aloha kako. Thank you again for tuning in to another Star Side of Hawaiian Politics. Today's forecast from Oko Kiawe for the next five. We have out of Hawaii, Baha'is. 77, low 66. Out in Puilo, we have a high 69, low 62. Out in Hilo One, we have a high 79 and a low 62. Out in Volcano, it is a high 66, low 59. Out in Captain Cook, your high was 89, and your lows is 72. And out on Mauna Kea, it's very, very bright. It was actually kind of rainy the other day, but today is very nice. Mahalo once again, your weather for March 6, 2020. DJ Derbs. The mana olelo no keiala, the word of mana for today is kia'i, everyone. When you go to Tutu Papa Kilo database, type in the word Kia'i. 30,201 hits will pop up. And the first one I just so happened to um, click on, December 24th, 1834. E Kia'i kako, e pule hoi, no ka a ole kako i ike i kala, a ole hoi i kahora, no kako e make ai. The next one I click was in December 16, 1882. Kia i a pule mau. Kia i a pule e po kole no ka wa. Kia i na ua nei. Kelele nei la. Kia i Kia i a pule mau. A pai o mai ka i e. Kia i a mau. Kia i a mau, kia i a mau, kia i a mau, kia i a kapo uli i ke au, kia i a pule mau. Kako, the coronavirus is here. We need to kia i our keiki, we need to kia i our families, we need to kia i our lands. We need to guard, protect, caretake, watch over, overlook, and protect our families. The coronavirus is here, Kako. So the mana olelo for today. And be sure you do the pule. Be sure you do the pule for your families and loved ones. And uh, we need to kia'i kako apau. So that is the mana olelo for today. Uh, National crisis. Mahalo, DJ Derbs, for yeah. the mano lelo of the day. Um, now, up to our March 6, 2020, smash or pass. <clears throat> up on the first chopping block today, coronavirus. <clears throat> Call my coronavirus update, DJ Derbs. COVID 19 emergency proclamation. 
First case in Hawaii, uh, proclaims Governor Ige, confirmed. Uh, 21 aboard cruise ship off California tested positive for coronavirus after Hawaii trip. So with this proclamation, emergency proclamation, Governor Ige confirms, like we have been saying for the past few weeks, the coronavirus is here, Kako. So you need to kia'i your ohana, you need to kia'i your family, and don't believe in the hype that we're not safe because the coronavirus is here, it's confirmed, and it's probably been spreading for a while already. So now is the time to kia'i your ohana and be responsible because it's here, like we've been seeing. So I got to give Governor Ige a smash on his emergency proclamation because it's th three weeks too late. KP, I got to give him a smash. KP, cornerstone, level them out. Coronavirus. Okay. Right now, what we have is a first confirmed um, person with coronavirus. Yes. And um, so the, the, um, the occupier's governor failed to safeguard the um, Hawaiian population in Hawaii simply by even going to Japan mm -hmm. to, um, you know, uh, to have an open line where people can travel freely back and forth. And um, so, he, you know, with that right there, he's very irresponsible. And now every family has to take this in their own hands. What are you guys going to do? How are you guys going to safeguard, yeah. you know, your families? You know, and even, you know, you, it, it's sad where, you know, you're going to be confined in your, your own homes. So, you know, for um, the occupier's um, governor, Ige, I give him a smash. Yes, Kako. This proclamation is a national crisis. This is occurring right now in Moko Keave live time. What we're seeing is schools have already been shut down internationally. With that being said, your governor and your government has failed you severely. The international community is shutting down safeguards for our schools and our children. That should be our first evaluation is to Malama, our Ohana, and our Kiki. Um, KP, you said it. First, first person today identified less than an hour ago or two hours ago That's um, is, is, is unacceptable. Yes. Um, that's why Dark Side of Hawaiian Politics has been on this issue for, for quite some time already, about over a month or so that we've been bringing you guys these updates and urgency. So we just beg you guys to use your guys' own common sense. You guys are smart Hawaiians. So if you guys don't have to take your kids to school, this is an emergency proclamation brought to you by IGE and the Health Administration. So we have to smash on Ige for continuing to expose our keikis yeah. and giving us the coronavirus repeat in 2020. Next up on the chopping block, DJ Derbs, Tax Out OHA. OHA released this new document that's taxed out. Well, it's nothing new, but DJ Derbs, taxed out. Out to the Ohana Kukahikos from uh, Makena, uh, Maui, and the Chang Ohana that's been living in the same place since Kamehameha uh, Ekahi. And because of the coronavirus, you know, the first foreigner that came in 1778, and the continued pressure that the coronavirus puts on our people, and in this case in Maui and Makena, it's um, the hotels. Mm. The hotels built up million dollar homes million dollar real estate right around the ohanas and now they gotta pay like sixty thousand dollars of tax um per year and that's just unconscionable of how hawaiians have been losing land for over the past 100 years they use this system of real estate and taxation to steal our ancestral lands from our families so um i gotta give oha a pass for helping out the Chang and the Kukahiko Ohana out in Makena um, and to keep their lands uh, with legislation and uh, Keani Rollins. Uh, hope you guys can get this one passed so more of our families can keep their ancestral lands. So I got to give Oha a pass. KP. Kuleana problems. Okay, Kuleana problems. Okay, so the Kuleana problems 
it stems from January 17, 1893, mm-hmm. with the start of the U.S. occupation. And from that, we have a change in government. Not the country. The country exists. It's the government which changes the laws. And with the changes of the laws, these laws that they actually revised, it actually affects our, uh, our people mm-hmm. and their ancestral lands. So we mm-hmm. need to have um, initiatives where we can still keep our people on their lands. And um, you know, with, with OHA, I would give them a pass for their efforts. Efforts, efforts count. Efforts really do count, KP. Um, you know, the Kuleana have been attacked ever since 1893, right. um, of course. And so these mechanisms that the state um, has a process where your genealogy is confirmed through OHA, right? Yes. And then through OHA, you guys go through a Kuleana tax exemption process. Um, that's within state constitutional laws, Kako. So if you guys are not updated or connected with it, um, you know, we'll try to post up some links. But all of these things are very important because you cannot, in my mana, oh, you cannot get taxed out. Not from with the Kuleana awards attached to your family. It's already set in. Just like the trust lands, these are family trust lands. And I believe that the state not only has failed, they're committing fraud by allowing our families to get taxed out of Kuleana lands prior to any fraud. So it's a real simple thing. OHA, we have to pass. But for the governor, for the governor and their cronies, we must smash because these these kind of assaults have been um, in, w- happening within our families for, for many, many decades and generations. So end to taxing out our kulianas end of that so next up on the chopping block the ethics commissions ethics commissions dj derbs honolulu ethics commission financial disclosures civil beat um put this article out and it talks about you know right at the time when um the fbi is investigating uh the rail Right at the time when a uh, police chief and a prosecutor been found guilty. Public records in which Honolulu officials disclose their business interests, real estate holdings, and family ties are no longer posted on the Honolulu Ethics Commission's website. And disclosures from past years have been deleted. And when you call the director of the office, um, the um, ethics chair marks they have no disclosure of any wrongdoings up on the website so there is no transparency so now moving forward the honolulu ethics commission is in my opinion and eyes is allowing for further criminal bribes criminal land deals criminal theft of Kanaka lands, Kanaka resources, and the Honolulu Ethics Commission that's supposed to protect is the one um, attacking. So I got to give the Honolulu Ethics Commission a big smash on this one. KP, ethics. Honolulu Commission ethics. Okay, so um, strictly uh, speaking on law, international law, these um, commissioners are actually committing a crime known as usurpation of sovereignty mm-hmm. when they actually try to engage um, laws against the occupied state. So with, with these people right here, they're actually committing um, crimes under international law. And um, I'm going to give them, all of them, a smash. Ah, KP. So the director, Mrs. Jan Yamine, made this happen yes and we applaud mrs sandy ma the executive director of government accountability nonprofit common cause mrs sandy ma is the one who is bringing up these grieve concerns because now not only is hard to access these documents you must get extorted and pay the mrs clerk Without paying the Mrs. Clerk, you are not able to gain access. And access could take you up to a, to a healthy waiting point. So, Kako, 
That's what we're trying to explain. These full disclosures are very important because it shows a very technical picture that not everybody gets to see. Crook Caldwell, Crook the Clown Caldwell, took at least $155,000 from the Territorial Saving Banks. This almost sounds like a colonizing bank, but he is a bank director, and he received this a few years back. So without us knowing that he's gaining 155000 from a Territorial Savings Banks, we must follow the trail because all banks do a lot of corrupt deals. So for that is a smash. Crook Caldwell and the informations that are not being disclosed to the general public for free, and now you guys have made it nearly impossible to receive it. So there you guys have it, DJ Jerbs. Thank you for that. We needed to talk about that ethics commissions. They're continuing to violate our due process and violate the public trust. Next up is our Kingdom Weekly news coming and international from KPI, Kupuna Pono Ike. First up, our Polynesian news. Okay, on the um, Polynesian front, um, We'll look at the, um, the destruction of a moai in um, Rapa Nui. Um, you had an individual actually um, struck one of the uh, moai, the kiis, and destroying this moai. And it was, you know, um, estimated that it was a thousand years old. Hmm. You know, so, you know, so the, in the initial report, it doesn't state why he struck um, the moai with his truck but it's, it's, it's completely destroyed. And um, moving on to... Um, you got your world news coming up, and we have a breaking news. Someone important was caught out in California. You, your world news with your... Okay, um, I have one more um, Polynesian news, okay? Yes. And this Palomai. is um, in um, Polynesia. This is the first city that is actually powered by solar um, oh. energy. So we have, for the very first time in Polynesia, um, a small little city that is actually run by solar panels and about 60 commercial Tesla batteries. And, and um, who is this? Who is this? This is a small little island uh, within um, American Samoa. Hey, oh, Samoa. And so the challenge that they had in the past is that they were um, importing diesel. And at some time in, in um, um, rough weather, they couldn't actually get the diesel to run their generators. So with this, um, you know, this is this is very great for in Polynesia that we have, you know, um, self-sufficiency and not dependency on fossil fuel. Okay, um, so we will go um, to actually um, world news, and um, the the breaking news is actually is in the um, United States, um, they caught a um, former Nazi um, guard that was living in <laughs> the United States, and he was a um, guard in World War II in a concentration camp. Oh. And I believe um, he's about 92 or 94 years old, and now he's getting extradited from the United States because of his um, past um, war crime. And that's the world that we live in oh man kp the world news you know we don't we don't when we caught the first win of this dj derbs what was your ins what was your first instinct just a quick one about that about that futuristic caught that he just said in california this this historical caught guard gotta give him one pass because these criminals that are out there will get caught and the criminals in the Hawaiian Kingdom today, you mm -hmm. will get caught when your time is up. Mm -hmm. So you need to comply with the law. You need to comply with returning justice to the Hawaiian people because you end up like this guy. Right. Just like you said, DJ Derbs, this has to be a pass for this um, unique crew. I have to, I, I, we, we don't even have a name, KP, for them, right? But I know they have a special unit that deals yes. with these issues, yeah? Oh, yes, yes, uh-huh. And so, so you know, do you know a little bit about that? So even like in um, Israel, 
they have actually a special yes. group and they go and they hunt Nazis mm-hmm. throughout the world. So it doesn't matter if you know you uh, committed a crime 60 years ago. They, you know, as a as a war criminal, you're going to be caught one day. Yes. And that's, and that's what happens. So if you guys seen that video, um, we have the link. We actually have the news report. So go ahead, um, get connected. Go read a little bit more about these individuals because there's many more that was caught before. Oh, yes. But uh-huh. for the team that goes and executes these war criminals um, for these war crimes, um, it's a pass. It's a simple pass. Thank you, KP, for bringing that up. And so we have one more, your Hawaiian Kingdom News Weekly Update. You were sick last week, but this week you can get to get a little bit more connected with the... Royal Commissions of Inquiry. Yes. KP. Okay. So, um, currently, uh, I think we just um, this um, past past week, the Royal Commission of Inquiry released this book right here. So this book is uh, it's actually it's the um, foundation and also um, an investigation of war crimes being committed in the Hawaiian Kingdom. Mm-hmm. So, th- you know, this book is almost like 400 pages and it's really detailed. You have also the commissioners who actually um, compiled the information. And these people are international um, scholars and also um, they deal with humanitarian law and also um, war crimes. So. We have put this also um, in PDF form, so you can download this yes. and you know just read this. It's it's, it's very you know interesting. This A is, lot of data. Yeah. So this is facts. <clears throat> this is facts. You know, from um, scholars within the international arena about war crimes, humanitarian um, law, international law, and a little current issues with Hawaii, right? A little this, with a this little. This whole thing stems from actually. Um, it's a foundation from the start of the um, the continuity of the Hawaiian Kingdom through today, yeah. and how um, this is valid uh, facts um, on on war crimes. And um, this is very interesting. Um, people need to read this, and it it has a lot of information on this right here. It I you know is like I said, it's almost like 400 pages. And, um, 400, you heard them. Yeah, KP said it. 400. Right, so take a break. Take a break while yeah. you're reading. Digest so actually it. Actually, we'll also um, have an audio book. So if you, if you don't want to read it, ah. you can just listen to um, Mahalo the audio, KP the audio, audio book. book. Audio right, book. So we're, you know, we're all about no excuses. No excuses. Right, so you we're either all read about or you listen. Information. It's everyone. It's a, you know, um, sharing information that is factual. And that is real, and we are part of the international community. So the international law actually um, is valid within the occupied state, Mm. the Hawaiian Kingdom. There you guys have it. So if you guys didn't get it, KP is going to have this on his link. Yes. And also, he's we're going to put it on the dark side of Hawaiian politics and our other links, so you guys can get connected with it. Like he said, if you don't read, um, we have a listening pod, uh, DJ Derbs. Um, the Royal Inquiry, we touched about it a little bit, but um, KP talked about it a little bit more in depth of the um, availability of it. Um, you got any mana on it? You cannot ignore the level of professional expertise that weighs in on this thing. I mean, we're talking about world expertise so that if anyone was to go to court they would be the foremost experts Mm. um in the world in the field of human rights in the field of war crimes in the field of international violations Mm -hmm. so you cannot ignore um the publication and in my opinion you need to start to take the right steps to comply with hawaiian kingdom law in the hawaiian kingdom territory Mm -hmm. and that's why i just gotta give the Royal Commission of Inquiry, a big pass. Yeah. Mahalo. Mahalo kako, yeah. So I did read a little bit about it. Um, I actually went through the first 50. Um, so I am taking my break. And it's, it's, it's quite interesting. I'm not going to lie, you know. Um, the reading material is, is very eye-opening. And it comes through a lot of factual, credible um, resource people. And we could call them historical Walking historical books, right? right. They're exactly. walking historical books with all of these data that they're compiling and giving. So, mahalo to the inquiry, the ohana, who continue to do the AI education campaign that we need. 
And we love that, and we continue to push it to our communities to read. We may not always agree, but it's always, to get, it's always good to get updated and connected to what happened in the past and to our present. So, mahalo kupuna ike for this week's Kingdom News update. And now up to our last three for March 6, 2020, Dark Side of Hawaiian Politics. First, our last, first, the last one of the first three is the Liliokalani Trust building a center for our keikis out in Keau. DJ Derbs, Liliokalani Trust purchasing the Kipuka Keau for Native Hawaiian kids and ohana for use after school programs. QLT is engaged in massive development uh, right now in their lands, especially in Kona. So um, I know they're trying to follow uh, Kamehameha schools um, in generating funding. And, um, you know, when you really look at the uh, trust, it's supposed to be Hawaiian trust for the Hawaiian people. But it seems like uh, fraud continues. Um, economic generation for a specific few continues while the Hawaiians are left on the side. Mm. So um, I'm not too sure what to say, but as long as they serve more mm -hmm. um, Hawaiians, I got to give QLT a pass, but um, we need an audit. Yes. So KP, the purchase, the use, what is your thoughts? Okay, um, my man now on this right here, you know, um, establishing an educational center mm -hmm. for our people. Yes. Is um, my personal man now is that, you know, the bottom line is that we have, we need more facilities yes. to facilitate our people. And, mm -hmm. um, you know, the, um, the, the Queen's Trust actually is, you know, taking the initiative on more educational, um, centers around Moko mm -hmm. and um, for that right there for the educational yes. you know I actually give them a pass yes right here okay well Kako so in the dark side of Hawaiian politics we look at it a little bit more critically as family members and as is as Mokua's for our family um, so my concerns is just like how KP and DJ Derbs express um, any use for our community to expand, we must support. But as an orphan, especially for me and my family, which we are, um, we have grave concerns because the property that they purchase, the property that they have purchased is actually, they're, they're going to use 33,000 square feet, um, or you could say 6.7 acres around necessary around that area. But they purchased it from WH Shipment. Yes, that's Reverend Shipment, right? So we're not just saying these names because they own the property. We want to call it out because I believe that there's a breach of trust while other trusts start absorbing lands from other trusts. So the property out in Shipment is underneath the Luna Lilo Trust. So those lands are already accounted for. So I was always wondering why would a Queen Lilio Kalani trust that already has its land base would actually absorb another trust, which is Kupuna Homes, where Kupuna have no homes yet. So anything that prevents our or, or helps preserve our culture, especially our orphans and our families after school management, I'm highly in support of, but I believe that the portfolio must look deeper into the parcels that they're purchasing so there's no infringing on other benefits that are supposed to go to other trusts, Luna Lilo Kupuna Homes. So I must give a pass for the support of our growth of our Keiki and our Kupuna after school programs, which are highly needed, which are highly needed, but we must smash on the property basis because we know the true identity of the properties where it lays and that must be addressed. Shipment does not own the property in Hawaii. And if you guys say they do, please give us a link. Hit us up on the dark side of Hawaiian politics. We'll be happy to have this conversation or even share a little bit more information. But once again, that is a pass for our kikis as always. Next up is our summary lawsuit. Oha is suing for our tutu lady, Mauna Kea. KP, you first, KP. You first. Our sacred sites. 
All right. Okay. So the the, the thing is, there's a um, mismanagement, mistrust that's going on right now, that, and you have OHA, mm -hmm. you know, um, filing a lawsuit. And um, for me personally, it's like it's like um, the state is suing the state. <laughs> yes, but it yes, is, yes, 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 yes. Because OHA, left hand, touch right hand. Yes, because OHA is created by the United States and the fake state, right? With the uh, the best interest of the fake state and not the um, Hawaiian people mm. and its population. Yeah. And um, you know, with with the um, lawsuit, okay, what's going to happen? You know, monetary. Mm. Where is the money going? Is yes. that money going to be accountable, or they just going to, you know, use Good the money? Good point. Good point. Right. So where is it going? You need to actually really watch this situation on this um, lawsuit. Mm. Yeah, because you know we need accountability, accountability. On, on this whole thing, right? Because without accountability, is that, you know. It's like I said, it's like the state is suing the state. Yeah, yeah. KP, so simple. DJ Derbs, lawsuit, OHA, slapping the right hand, state. The facts in this case are indisputable. Mismanagement, fiduciary duties, breach of trust is beyond a doubt. Watching this case is like watching... The money go from one pocket on your right side to your left pocket on the other side. Yeah. They say 50 years breach of trust. But what about the 100 year breach of trust? The 44,000 still waiting on the wait list. So where is the money going? How is the money going to use? But it's always not the Hawaiians who gets to receive the benefit somehow. It's the state agencies that pop up, OHA, Department of Hawaiian Homelands, Office of Hawaiian Education, that say they work for the Hawaiian, but really they don't. So I got to give this um, lawsuit a big smash on OHA uh, because yes, yes. I think it's just continued fraud. There you go, Kako. DJ Derbs, smash, right. OHA, quick summary lawsuit judgment. Clear breach of trust breach of fiduciary duties, and breach of the Native Hawaiian Trust. The state, as in a compact agreement in 1959 to fulfill this constitutional oath, which they have failed continuously. The mismanagement of Mauna Kea is led by none other. The emergency proclamation, Bill Amalaya, who falsely signs over with Governor Ige's sister-in-law, Judge Elmano falsifying documents and lying underneath congressional oath to continue the pillage of our trust and our Native Hawaiian trust lands. So these guys are career criminals. How, how Isla and the departments continue to pillage. So when OHA says that they're going to slap this lawsuit, the 600 million KP, right down the street, Keokaha. That 600 million went to where? Not the Native Hawaiian no. community. No. And that we must be very concerned. So when you see OHA coming out of the woodworks, just like other government agencies that come out to vote for these people during lunch hours and work days, these are just a bunch of crisis actors that we have to smash upon. So, Kako, when you see a crisis actor, point them out. Because this is definitely concerning news for the matter of fact that monies and support has never came to our kupuna in aid. So, there you have it. Our last up on the chopping block is the LNR supervisor fined $10,000 for using company vehicles during private times for private companies. Yes. KP? Well, Enlighten us. If you look at this long, you know, um, ongoing situation where the occupiers, they don't follow law. They will take law into their own hands, use actually um, equipment and supplies for their own benefit. Mm -hmm. 
And these are actually supposed to be um, officers of the fake state. And they simply continue to break the laws. And so, you know, I, I got to give, give this whole situation of mismanagement. <laughs> mismanagement. Well, smash. Smash, KP. DJ Derbs. Smashing. Are we passing? What about this deal in our crook? Everyone needs to be the maka ainana Ew. and watch the yes. evidence of the mismanagement of our resources, of our equipment mm -hmm. used for personal profit, personal gain. Yeah. When our people are homeless, our people are suffering, and here we see guys who think they can take... Um, justice into their own hands by filling their pockets. This is just uh, very shameful. Mm. So I just got to give this a, a smash. <laughs> Supervisor. Hawaii Commission Patrick Chung Tim admitted, he admitted that he has used company vehicle, which was used for big, big water risk uh, management assessment and I Waterman provided marine rescue training and corporate clients. He also let one personal company store their equipment at the DLNR base in Kaneohe. So, once again, this is Bill Isla. If you look at the age of this individual, they're right down the same classmates. So, these things that are happening down the state has a long trail. They're still recovering. Down in Kauai, they were using their beamers in their, 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 um, their monitors. They were leaving them in their car while they were going out and fishing. These guys was raping natural resources out in Maui, right? Now he's a commissioner, Randy Iwo, right? Randy Iwo, big dog. He was taking natural resource opai for personal party. And that's what we're trying to say, Kako. This is a this is this is an extraordinary thing. Look at these guys; they're all classmates. Um, Iwo just got admitted to DHHL commissioner. Isla falsely signs the emergency proclamation, false documents to get Mauna Kea kicked off. And now we have a supervisor fined ten thousand. That is insufficient for a breach of trust and constitutional oath breaking. These guys should be put in jail, just like any other civilian. But that's not the case here. So we thank you, D. Lenar, to continuing the pillaging of our communities and our natural resource on the dimes of our community members already struggling. There you guys have it for the Dark Side of Wine Politics, March 6, 2020, for Smash or Pass. And we have our last two segments is our Constitutional Oath Breaker, where we bring to you the highest award that a county official can receive in this occupational events. KP, our Constitutional Oath Breaker this week, who is it? It has to go to the occupier's government. Oh, he's on a street, in. KP. What we need to see is Ige is very irresponsible for any um, safeguarding of our people in Hawaii. You know, we were constantly talking about the coronavirus over a month. Over a month. And, you know, and in, you know they say they're downplaying the whole thing. It's like, oh, yeah, don't worry about it. It's like, you know, if you don't think about it, it's not going to happen. Mm -hmm. Well, you know what? It's here. It is here today, you know. It was actually um, announced probably about two and a half, three hours ago that we have this person who is infected on Moko Okeave. So, oh. constitutional oath breaker Ige. continues his mm -hmm. streak. Right. Three weeks running. Ige. Manao on your oath breaker again this week, your championship, 3P. I got to agree with that. Governor Ige calls an emergency proclamation on my kupuna, and they get arrested so, so quickly, so fast, like so swift. Hmm. And then when the coronavirus is an epidemic around the world, World Health Organization, this guy, the governor, takes weeks before he 
shuts down the schools. Mm -hmm. He needs to shut down the schools, Kako. We need to keep our keiki safe. So be vocal out there, Kako. And Governor Ige is not going to do it, so we need to do it. Rise up, call your school administrators, call your principals, and say let's shut down the school and let's stop the spread of this So there you have it, your constitutional old breaker Ige, continuing his active streak of just screwing up his tenure and constitutionally violating everybody's civil rights and for the betterment of his pocket. So... Up next is our Makahanaka Ike before we get into our Rapid Aloha segment where we give out our mahalos for all of those sponsors who continue to sponsor us over the years in the endeavors of our AI education throughout our community. What time is OO Olympics? Rapid Aloha. Down at NO Kapaole. Um, it's actually going to be um, this Monday that they're going to actually um, harvest. So it's every other Mondays. And I, li I would like to, um, you know, uh, mm -hmm. give a shout out to Kanaka Kava, yes. which is located Locations. in the Coconut Grove in Kona. They're open from 10 to 11 p.m. daily. So, yes. you know, go get your um, your ava yes. and also your tinctures at Kanaka Kava. Go out to see Bite the Eye cousin bite the eyes out open tomorrow i think he's at sears so if you got your fish fix go and check him out he's living off the homestead i know opula pula it's always live and go ahead and check out hey one of our sponsors through all of our tireless work check out the gear the local kiais and get connected so you gotta know that the rapid aloha is my word kia'i to all of you. Guard your families, guard your keiki from this coronavirus that arrived on Moku Okiave. Moku Okiave, keep your ohana safe. Yes. That's my rapid aloha out to everybody. Keep them safe. And so we have homework like always, but I felt like the homework always can go at the end. Makahana Kaike, KP, homework for this weekend. What we got? Um, the homework for this weekend is to download the Royal Commission of Inquiry, yes, and you know, start reading this to be a uh, ma'a on, on this investigation of war crimes in the Hawaiian Kingdom. Thank you, KP. So, go ahead, download the Royal Commission of Inquiry, um, the PDF, and there's also the audio. So, you can't tell KP you can't do it, he got you covered. The cornerstone, DJ Derbs, Makahana Kaike, in the work we learn. We need everyone out there to call your principal, yes. to call your superintendent, to call the district superintendent, to call the governor, to close our schools. Mm. Protect our keiki, keep our families and our kupuna safe. We do not need our keiki to be infected by this gruesome virus that's an epidemic going around the world. So go call the schools. Yes. Let's shut them down yes. for two weeks. We can do the two weeks in the summertime. DJ Derbs. So go ahead and post out a little link on top of Dark Side of Hawaiian Politics tonight to kind of give them a little layout of their superintendent's numbers, right? Emails. So keep an eye out there for the Makahana Kaike from DJ Derbs. And for me, Makahana Kaike, just like KP and DJ Derbs said, get connected with the inquiry. But also, above all, malama na ohana out there. Be safe. Uh, if your kids, um, are, right now there's a proclamation. Be smart about it. You don't have to take your kids to school. Don't take them to school. This is a time where you must malama. Because that is the makakahana kaike for life is just to malama. So there you guys have. For your episode 13, Dark Side of Hawaiian Politics, DJ Derbs, KP, National Crisis. Ma'a, the Ohana, O Olympics, we out. Mahalo. Till next week. Aloha. 120 seconds and KP guys will come back to talk a little bit more about the issues in the Hawaiian Kingdom Weekly. A little bit more in depth. 120 seconds for a quick Pu'umimi and we'll be right back.
All right. Hello, Kako. Welcome back. 120 seconds up. Took a little break, but we're back in the Get Connected session where we get into our topics um, a little bit more in depthly, um, especially the international topics, the inquiries, and um, the Nazis are still being tracked down. Obviously, yeah, KP? Yes. yes. So, you know, I just want to actually connect the war crimes that happened in um, World War II and the war crimes are being committed today in the Hawaiian Kingdom. So as you can see, this um, Nazi who was a guard um, in a concentration camp during the World War II, he actually um, somehow got away um, from Germany and uh, migrated to the Americas. He, he uh, migrated to the United States and he thought he was safe. And um, they find, you know, it finally caught up to him, the war crimes. And um, I believe he was, you know, he's now either 92 or 94 years old. And um, when they actually questioned him, he got very upset in saying that, well, this happened a long time ago. And, um, we, you know, you should uh, forget, uh, forget about it. It's like, no, you're not going to forget about this because you committed a war crime. And, um, you know, it doesn't matter how long it takes um, to actually, you know, capture um, war criminals, they're going to be caught. And as you can see, you know, throughout um, time from, you know, um, 1947 and on, you know, um, you had um, organization who went out into the world to track down these um, war criminals. So these people are war criminals. It doesn't matter how old you are and you think that, oh, you know, it, it happened a long time ago, uh, 50, 60, 70 years ago, you're um, still a war criminal. What is his name? What is his name, KP? Um, I really can't see from here. Jakir Pa, Paja. P-A-A-J, Paj. Man. Yeah, so, you know, what people need to realize also is that at the end of World War II, um, a lot of the um, German scientists was given a free pass to uh, relocate to the United States because of their technology of um, rockets. So a lot of them came over here and they had a new life. A new life, you know, and even if they, um, they killed people, mass murder, but even with that, the organization in Israel, they didn't care. They went and seeked out this war criminals, and they um, captured these war criminals, and they, they, you know, they brought them to justice. So that is, you know, what happened in the past, and this here, right here, is the investigation of war crimes being committed today in the occupied state. We must remember now, okay, we are in an occupied state for mm -hmm. the last 127 years. So this right here, this um, book, actually it states the criteria of who is a war criminal mm -hmm. under international law. Mm -hmm. And um, with this right here, this is all based on facts and law. This is not new law that was recently um, written. You know, th these are some of the laws is over 100 years old. And we need to be mindful that we are part of this international yes. uh, family. Okay, so when we became an inter um, a recognized state, uh, November 28, 1843, we were equals mm -hmm. to the rest of the um, family of nations. We were actually um, a member of the family of nations during uh, the... Uh, the mid uh, 1800s, and there's only 22, I believe, with 22 nations within the family of nations. We were the first non-white um, nation state to be, you know, submitted into the family of nations. Okay, so we are equal, and um, we need to get away from this um, dated myth about um, we colonize. Mm -hmm. We were never colonized. Mm -hmm. We were never colonized. Yes. Because if anyone tells you that we're colonized, you need to simply ask them when. Because when we became an, a nation state, 
you would never lose that status as a nation state. So when one country goes into another country and both of them are nation states, it's an occupation. It's not colonization. Colonization happens when you have a group of people and when a country moves in and then they get colonized. Okay, so that is actually a, an outdated myth. Yeah. Even for self-determination. Mm -hmm. We cannot seek again for self-determination because we got our self-determination back in November <laughs> 28th, ayo, ayo, ayo. 1843. You received that so long time ago. We cannot use that two um, terminology mm -hmm. because it doesn't fit the occupation. Yeah. What it fits is non self governing territories mm -hmm. like the, uh, Native Americans and other indigenous people because we are not indigenous, mm -hmm. right? Yes. We are not indigenous uh, people, right? So, so we, are, we are actually, you know, um, Hawaiian subjects. Yes of our country, which still exists. So when the um, American um, take over, it, they took over our government, not the country, because we're a nation state. Yes. The, you know, the nation state, the Hawaiian kingdom, continues to exist. And it's what we need to understand. And this here, this book, established the facts through law. So I encourage you guys to Read this right here, and we're, you know, uh, hopefully we're going to, you know, come out with the audio book where people can actually listen to, yeah. you know. Um, it's a lot of, it's, it's a lot of writing in there, of course, so we, so we yeah. have to be, a, a, you know, a little bit more versatile for right. those who don't want to read 400 yeah, papers. because, you know, I mean, it's like almost 400 pages. 400 pages. And, you know, it's, it's, it's broken down into uh, various chapters, and what's really good about this book, mm -hmm. it starts from the beginning. Yeah. How the Hawaiian kingdom was organized, you know. And throughout history, and through international law, uh, humanitarian law, you know, and the laws of occupation, it states everything in here. Mm. And the criteria of who is a war criminal in the uh, occupied state. So, so I, I actually have I actually have a couple couple things that you know I wanted to ask you because you know during this the the, the picture going back to the to the prisoner the yes. one um, the the guard who killed. Or, or participated. Yes, he participated. He participated. Maybe he didn't kill, but he right. participated somewhere. He got found guilty at the ripe age of 95. Right, 95. And so, like you said, there's many times that these people have been getting caught, like out in Brazil, right? right. There, there's Especially documentations, in right? Yeah, I mean, yeah, because another safe haven was in Brazil. Yes. And a lot of the Nazis moved and re relocated in Brazil. But, you know, the Israelis, they went out. Uh -huh. And they, the Nazi hunters, mm -hmm. they went out and they captured... You know the Nazis, and still going right here. It you is just still showed, going. You, you showed because you showed the picture of the, you become of, the, an, of, the oh, of the captured. Yeah, because once you become an, a war <laughs> criminal, you're a war criminal. You don't have a statute of limitation. Once yeah. you, you once you're indicted as a war criminal, you're a war criminal. So 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 you, so, so my other concern was too. They 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 were harboring in Argentina and Brazil. Right. But but was it Dr. Braun, the head of the NASA? Wasn't he from Germany too? Yes. Wasn't he top? Top right. there. So what I what I said earlier is these are top notch players right. in the legal society right now. Right. So what happened is after the war, you know, you know, Germany lost, but yes. the United States was in competition for technology, yes. rocket technology. There it is. And so what they wanted to do the race is, for space. Right. The race for space, and they wanted the technology, so they compromised. Mm. You know, they compromised, and they gave these uh, war criminals. Yes. A new life. Because of the knowledge that they were sharing as government informants? Right, exactly. As informants, because right? Because they wanted the information. Was either to go to jail or be an informant, right? Right. So, you know, either way is like, okay, you, you're not going to work with But us? not just an informant, a million dollar informant. Right. Right. A millionaire. I mean, they had well paying jobs, you know. Homes, new life, new, new life, social security cards, everything. right? Yeah. So they had a new life, new ID as Americans and everything like that. But see, so it doesn't matter if the United States chose to compromise, yeah. you know, um, you know, um, these war criminals. Other countries went out after them, and they they grabbed them. So 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 so, so KP, I know a lot of people is going to be wondering about this, but I, I just had a wondering question too. So with this being compound, with the inquiries coming out, and all of these violations that's been compounding over the years, right? Um, 
maybe not to the necessary extent of a gas chamber or that kind of oh, genocide, no. but no. through this process, right, we'll be able to label government oh, accountable. Yes. Yes, government. There it is. Okay, so what you need to understand is that they're not going after everybody. They're not going after everybody, who they yes. they are going after are is the leaders. The leaders. The leaders who, uh-huh. you know, um, actually um, violate the war crime and actually... Um, who using, carried out. Right, and using people. Yes. Right, encouraging people to commit war crimes. So they're not going after everybody. So the this is this is, the this is part of the process right. of what we're gathering to submit so that these qualifications can be applied in yes. this day and age. Right. So this is almost like a template. So, you know, like everybody is a, a victim. To some degree, you have been victimized yes, to a everybody. certain degree in Kohova Ipai. Right. Everybody. Everybody. Even, everybody. Even, everybody. You know, you know um, Hawaiian subjects, non-Hawaiian subjects. Everybody. No ever. colors, no yeah. size matters. We got in it. Hawaii, you know, you're actually um, a victim because of, you know, Various um, infractions. Yes. You know, and simple things, acti- acti- simple daily activities, yes, activities that infringe on your daily lives of freedom of um, expression, freedom of religion, freedom right. of just your constitutional rights are right. being pillaged on a daily basis. Maybe that you're not too concerned of, or the generalized person are not too ma with our constitutional right. God given so rights. If you look under the, um, like the laws of occupation, uh, the Geneva Convention, yes. it says the occupiers cannot destroy a mm. sacred site. Yes. Mount Nakia. Yeah. Yes. So, exactly. So, when they want to try to attempt to build TMT, that's this a criminal act. Yes. That's a war crime. Yes. So, we need to you know, address Document, these, um, right? you know, um, what's going on, criminal activities. And know who we are, because this we need to use you know the laws of occupation and not use the fake state laws because that's not our laws, right? So the valid laws it states you know right in here the valid laws in the occupied state in the Hawaiian Kingdom are the Hawaiian Kingdom laws and also international no laws. laws. Yes, you know you have even like. Um, Professor Desaius from the United Nations. Yes, Professor Dr. Came Desaius. Out, yes, he came out with um, you know, his um, report uh, late um, last year. And he states that this is a strange form of occupation. occupation yes, and yes. what he means strange is form. that the strange form of occupation is that when the occupier is occupying the, um, the state, mm-hmm. they, they need to actually Hold use the laws. Yeah, so they use the laws. Of, of the the occupied um, country, they, so they're supposed to use the Hawaiian Kingdom law, yes. international law, yes. and not American law. So if you look at the, um, you know, like Iraq, mm-hmm. when the Americans occupied um, Iraq, what they did never, they use? They never used um, American law. It was Iraqi law. Uh-huh. It was conforming to the laws of occupation. Yes. If you look when the, um, you know, at the end. Of um, World War II with the um, the Japanese in Japan, when they had Mar- uh, MacArthur in Japan as the administrator, they used Japanese law, not American law. But yes. within this situation, the United States never conformed or complied to the laws of occupation. But 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 um, officer. Leland Pa, right? Yes, Leland he pa. even called the United States Pacific Post Command. Right. And they gave him the verification of, we can't help you because yes. there is no treaty. Yeah, there's no <laughs> treaty of annexation. And this is coming from, from the Pacific <laughs> Command, from the military. From the military They're head stating down. that there is no such thing as the um, annex- <laughs> annexation yes. in, in Hawaii. Yeah, no. Kako, there's no documents. And, right. and, and Leland Pa, mahalo, if you're out there listening, you know. Right. I know we haven't seen each other for a while, but we always tip your hat, we always tip our hats to you because, you know, not a lot of people remember this. Right. But, but for us, you coming from Moko Keave, it, 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 it's a very, it's a very special thing for us to know that one of our own homegrown officers who sworn to keep the oath uphold had done his job. But his employer has yet to perform its perfect right duties right, exactly. to its citizen. Mm-hmm. But an officer, Leland Pa, for him, 
for his, to put his level of integrity on the line to make that phone call that his boss and supervisor should have done. Right. He did it on behalf of his family members and his endeavors of living a Pono life. Right. So to you, Leland Pa, we tip our hats because people need to remember that there was an officer from Moko Okeave, a Hawaiian officer, who had a heart and had the courage to be Pono to ask that question. Yes. And he asked it and he had a response. Yes. They have no lawful authority right. over so, the subject. You know, if, even if you go back to uh, 1988, okay, and the Attorney General at that time, you know, stated that he doesn't know what law yeah. that the U.S. used to annex yes. Hawaii. And that's a legal case. Yeah, because 1988. They, ne they didn't use a, actually a treaty. What they used was actually... Uh, is this uh, what you call? It's just like in an internal um, law. That's all they use, and so that law it stays within the boundaries of the United States. That law cannot be enforced two or three thousand miles away. It's like the um, the Congress is saying that okay, we're going to annex Canada. It's like you know what? You cannot annex Canada with a joint resolution. It's only an opinion. I got I got I, 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 I got a comment, man. I know we're running out of time, KP, but you know what I think we should do? Yeah. You know, maybe if you guys out there listening in tune, we're going to we're going to try and do some homework, right? Maybe maybe during in this get connected session, maybe we should go over the inquiry. Sure. Maybe maybe a chapter or two throughout a span. Right. Um not too heavy. No, not too heavy. Just light. Right. We highlight what we believe that is valuable enough to light the flame. To get our our family members to read. Yes. So we're yes. gonna we're gonna so me KP and DJ Derbs are gonna try and um, digest a little bit above this, and we're gonna try and break down um, you know maybe by chapters or a few pages whatnot throughout this 400 because it's so thick it's so the conversations um, what we have during the day we have to start using the context of what we read and change our mindsets onto our daily construct when we look at our human rights violations, yeah? Right. So we can kind of change that mindset in our daily lives. Yes. So we're aware when we're, when, when we're out there with our families, when we're traveling, uh, when we're getting violated, right? right? So, so it know, gives this, us a little picture this of This right here, we should have, like, you know, this um, is a conversation piece that we can yes, talk it is. It your is. friends, your family, and because this is all based on this law. is this it's is good facts. to know right this is good to know yes and then by that way you can give out to your family members because these are what you need to know in living in this occupation so you can be productive and yet be in safety mode where you're not being so much violated right i mean <laughs> this is a um, a book of a wealth of information yeah. it also states every treaty that we have with every country. So this every is, this, treaty, this right here, Kako. Is, you know, it's well put together and you know, I encourage you guys to download and you know read this. You know, read this. Well KP, thank you man for the get connected session. Um thank you guys for tuning in. Sorry for the um the emergency um news tonight. We had some other activities we have to do and Malama with our families um this Saturday, but next Saturday we'll be starting 7 a.m. sharp. Back to the same Back time. Back to the same time. Just 30 minutes, a little bit more earlier, so we could get everyone and still get back home to our families in time. Right. So once again, thank you. This is um, National Crisis, KP, um, Dark Side of Hawaiian Politics, Episode 13, um, Emergency Proclamation, Protect the Hawaiian Kingdom. Coronavirus, first um, witness account reported today. About two hours ago, confirmed. We know there's more. But KP, just like everything else, the probiotics to kimchi is one of a healthy way right. to be proactive to combat. So if you guys know a little bit about remedies to be proactive for the CV-19, um, go ahead and share. And don't forget to share, share, share. And thank you guys for tuning in. KP, last words. All right. Stay safe in the kingdom. Stay safe in the kingdom. Go ahead. Go and check out Hawaiian Kingdom Air's IG. We are going down out past Hamakua for Kuliana Land Awards. And we are going to North 
North Hilo done, coming down to Hilo One this week. So go ahead, check out your family members. When you see them, point them out, tang them in. There's rules attached to the Kuleana and Royal Patents. And let's keep it connected and keep on moving. Dark Side of Wine Politics, out. Aloha from Mokuoke Ave. KT.